Welcome to Michelle's Making Coffee, Crafts, Cookies, and Cocktails. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. Don't forget to comment and let me know what you like. For those of you who are new here, I hope you like what you see, subscribe, and watch for a new upload every Friday. Let's get to crafting. Project one, handsaw Christmas tree. You'll need four handsaws from the Dollar Tree and chalk paint. I used Waverly, Truffle, Elephant, and Steel, and also the Rust-Oleum white chalked paint and E6000 to hold everything together. You begin by gluing together two of the saws laying flat, and the third one will be perpendicular. While it's drying, I used a couple of jars of paint to help hold it up and keep it straight. Once it dries, you can stand it upright to attach the fourth saw. I used the paint jars to hold it steady again. Next, you'll use the chalk paint and truffle to paint the handles. I used a wire tie at the top to temporarily hold it while everything was drying. To achieve the galvanized metal look, I used the Waverly chalk paint in Elephant and Steel and the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Using a sponge, I dabbed it on. I started with the elephant color first, added white, and then added steel. And you just keep dabbing on top of each other and around. You want all of the shiny metal covered. And eventually, after dabbing it through, it begins to look like galvanized steel. It's amazing how it works but it ends up looking great, even though it looks messy to start with. Just keep going, it'll work. Once the painting was completed, I decided to add a star to the top. But you'll see I changed my mind about that afterwards. But I do glue the star to the top and clamp it on there to give it a little support. But that glue is going to help seal those ends of the saw together as well. So it's going to work out fine in the end. I just didn't like the way the star looked. I took jute cord and put it through the holes with trindles falling down to give it kind of a rustic but decorative look because I didn't like those holes in the top of the saw. And I think once the jute was added, it made the star look even more strange. I had pulled the jute from the center of the reel and that came out naturally curly, so it looked perfect when I hung it on the tree. I took the star off and I decided to go with some jute bows. I had some very thin jute cord and I used that just to make some simple bows, wrapped it around my fingers a few times and then tied it in a simple knot. And there you have it, our hand saw Christmas tree. Our next project is a gnome made from a mop head. You'll need a styrofoam tree form. The type with the flat top works best, a mop head, a six inch piece of dowel, and a pair of knee-high socks. You'll start by stretching one of the socks over the cone, get it on there really snug, and pull the sock up tight to the top. Tie that off with a zip tie. 
the mop head threads pull out easily. You'll need to pull about five or six out to use later. Glue the dowel to the center of the mop head. Cut off the excess sock. The second sock, you're going to cut diagonally from the toe to the band, cutting off the part that has the heel. Be careful not to cut into the band. Now with the mop head, turn it inside out using a generous amount of hot glue. You're going to glue it to the top of the gnome. Next, you're gonna glue the seam on the gnome's hat. Trim up any loose pieces along the seam, and then it's time to put the hat on the gnome. For his nose, I used a red miniature ornament from the Dollar Tree. And for the end of his hat, I used a silver miniature ornament. They come in silver, gold, or red, and you get 16 for a dollar. Now to fill in the space under his nose, we'll use those scraps that we pulled out in the beginning. Cut them to fit and place them under his nose, gluing them accordingly, and then kind of overlap some of the side pieces and dab a glue them down. And there you have it, our finished gnome. Project number three is a shabby chic Christmas tree. For this, you're going to need two of the Dollar Tree Christmas trees, a metal pail of some sort. Now I had that pail previously, but they do sell them at the Dollar Tree, an automotive cloth and floral foam. You're also gonna need some of the garland, wire ties, and a string of miniature lights. Start by setting the stand aside and pulling off the bottom piece. Flatten out the tree, separating between the levels. This is where you're going to use the garland tie. Place one tree on top of the other, and using the garland wire ties, wrap it around the tree and twist it. I used two at the bottom, one between each level, and the top one I wrapped around twice before twisting it tight. I also took the top two pieces and twisted them together, making it a little thicker at the top. Next, I cut the floral foam in half and stood one piece up and cut the other in pieces to wedge it in to give it some support. After pushing the tree down in to mark where it was going to go, I added hot glue and then placed the tree into the foam. Next, I cut a strip of the white automotive cloth and wrap that around the base of the tree to kind of make it look like snow. Now it's time to fluff that tree out and give it some life. To decorate the tree, we're gonna use the string of pearls. Maybe you remember that from last week's projects. Some tool that I had in my craft stash, the miniature lights, don't forget the batteries so we can check the lights, and oh yeah, the star we took off the handsaw tree. I start by wrapping the tool around the tree, tucking in and poofing out all the way around and all the way up the tree. I do that before I string the lights on and then I remembered, hmm, it's probably best to do the lights first. So you might wanna do lights first before tool. Be sure to check that your lights work before going to the trouble of putting them on the tree. Next, I glued the star to the top of the tree. The star suits this tree much more than the handsaw tree. Next, I take the string of pearls and I glue them to the tip of the branches around the tree. I did several layers of this up the tree. And there you have it, our shabby chic Christmas tree. Project number four, a Christmas song sign. For this, 
I used a sign from the Dollar Tree, some red chalk paint, and some vinyl letters that I printed out on my Cricut. I started by sanding the glitter off the word sledding and removing the jute hanger. I then gave it three coats of chalk red paint. Next, I printed out seven Christmas song titles on white vinyl using the Cricut. You can see here I've already applied Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Each title was about an inch and a quarter high and eight to nine inches long. Now Dollar Tree uses this sign pattern um, for just about every holiday or season, so you'd be able to pick it up almost any time of the year. I used red and white baker's twine to replace the hanger on the sign. You can get that at just about any dollar store and even Hobby Lobby. I think I got mine at Dollar Tree. Next, I took the Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and kind of dry brushed the edges and a little across the sign just to give it a little more, more rustic wintry look. I used a little piece of greenery with some red berries and put it on the corner. I added a second piece of greenery with some pine cones underneath that at the top. And it all needed a brushing of the white chalk paint for the finished look. And there you have it, the Christmas song sign. Our fifth project is the tree stand star using those leftover tree stands. I had made several projects using the Dollar Tree Christmas trees, so I had several of these stands around and thought, what could I do with them? And then it dawned on me to glue a couple together and make it look like a star and then bling it up. I used the E6000 to glue them together, and now I have a six prong stars. They have little tabs on the end, little feet, and I snipped those off. I had another one already glued together that I spray painted in Rust-Oleum Chalked Serenity Blue. To bling it up, I used that string of pearls again. <laughs> it's sure come in handy. And I also used some of the rhinestone strips that I had used for my previous project. Remember those nutcrackers? I glued the pearls around the center on each side. I used the rhinestone strips to go down each of the spokes on the star. And then I used a stick-on gem in the center to cover up that hole. Everything was done on both sides. You can see here I didn't snip off the feet on this star, but I did decide to do so afterwards and applied some gems where the feet had been. And there you have it, the tree stand star. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I definitely appreciate that and it helps the channel grow. For those of you who have never crafted before, I hope I've given you the courage to try something and for you longtime crafters out there, maybe some new ideas. I appreciate you joining me, spending time with me. Make it a great week. Don't forget to stop and smell the coffee. See you next Friday.